So to get started, you'll want to set up your point light somewhere about here. Make sure you up the wattage to about a thousand. Aim your camera directly at the 3D cursor, then you should be good to go. So you want to add in an icosphere, subdivide it five times, right click and shade smooth. Then you want to head over to the shading workspace like this and switch your um, uh, rendered mode to EV. And you can also switch it to cycles. I'm just going to do an EV because it runs faster on my computer. And then in render settings, you'll switch to ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections, and turn all of those on. So you're going to want to create a new material. And then you're going to want to name it orange peel, or whatever you want to call it. Orange peel, orange skin, whatever. Then you're going to want to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. do that, you just go to Edit Preferences, search up Node Wrangler, and hit the checkbox. You're going to hit Shift A, search for a noise texture. Get it right here. You're going to hit Control T, and then leave it like this. Next, you want to duplicate this noise texture two times. So to do that, you can hit Control Shift D, like so, and it duplicates twice. Next, you're going to hit Shift A, search for a color ramp, put it here, duplicate this twice as well, like so. Then you want to take the factor from each of the noise textures and plug it into the color ramp. These noise textures will represent the bump of the orange peel. So let's get into the first one up here. We're going to want to switch the scale to a 60, the detail to a 2, which we'll leave it there. The roughness we're going to put to a 0, and the distortion we'll put it at a 0.1. And if we control shift and left click on our color ramp, we can preview what is going on here. And so yeah. Anyways. Now on the color ramp, we're going to want to move these values around a little bit. Black at a 0.2 and the white at a 0.8. Like so. And then that is done for this one. Next, we're going to go to this next noise texture down here. Preview the color ramp. We're going to want to switch the scale all the way to a 100. We'll leave the detail there. The roughness a 0 and the distortion a 0.1 or a 0 0.05. Pardon me. So oh, scale 100, detail 2, roughness 0, distortion 0 0.05. Then on the color ramp, we're going to switch the black to a 0.1 and the white to a 0.9. Like that. And then we're done with that noise texture. Next, we're going to go to this noise texture, preview the color ramp for it, switch the scale to a 200. The detail we'll leave there. The roughness we'll put to a 0 and the distortion 0 0.025. Then the black and white values, we're going to be leaving both of these on the very far ends. And you can edit them if you choose to, to add more contrast. But for this tutorial, we'll be leaving them where they are at. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor all of these color ramps into the bump. So to do that, we'll hit Shift A, search for a bump node. I'll place that right here. We're going to hit Shift D and duplicate it twice. And we don't need to view that, so I'll just hit Control and hold right click to delete those lines. So then we're going to want to take the color from this color ramp and put it into the height. And then we'll wanna switch the strength to a 0 0.1, so 0.1, like so. And if we control shift left click on this bump node, this is our preview of what it's looking like. Then if we control shift click left click on this next bump node, we can take the normal from the first one and plug it into the normal of the second one, like this. And it looks like this. So we're gonna take the color from this color ramp, plug it into the height and switch the strength down to a 0 0.05, like so. What this is doing is it's combining the bumps from both noise textures. Then on the next one, let's preview the bump. Take the normal from the second bump, plug it into the normal of the third, take the color from the color ramp and to the height, change the strength to a 0 0.025, and this is a preview of all these bumps combined. It's looking like orange peel, which is what we want. So the next thing you wanna do is find out the roughness for this material. We'll hit Shift A and we'll search for a mix RGB node right here. I'm just going to grab these guys and move them farther away so we have more space. Then we'll want to switch this mix node to multiply, the factor to a 1, and we'll want to check this clamp box right here. Then we'll take the color from the first color ramp, plug into color 1, go from the second into color 2. If we control shift left click, we can preview what it's looking like, and it's multiplying them together like this. So then we just have to add the last one. So we'll hit shift D, uh, duplicate the mixed RGB node, Take the color from the first one and the color one, and then to color from the bottom color ramp and to color two. And if we preview, we see this. And it's multiplying all together, which is exactly what we want. Then we're gonna take this value and plug into the roughness. And if we preview this, we can see that it's shinier and less shiny in different spots, which is what the roughness is doing. 
as you can see right here. Anyways, well, it'll be better when we get the bump and the color in there. So to finish the bump, we're going to want to hit Shift A and add a noise texture. And this is going to mess with the warping of the orange peel because no orange is a perfect sphere. So then on the scale for this one, we're going to want to leave it at a 5, switch the detail to a 4, and the roughness to a 0.4. And then we're simply going to want to hit Shift A, search for a bump node, like this. Plug the factor from the noise texture into the height. Plug the normal output from the previous bump and plug it into the normal of this. And if we control shift left, Q, left click to preview, we can see what it's looking like right now. And that is way too strong. So we're going to switch the strength to a 0.2. And now we get some slight warping in the bumpiness. So then we're going to take the normal output from this guy and plug it into the normal of the shader. And if we preview the shader, we can see the roughness and the bump combined. And it's starting to look like an orange. Now all we need to do is factor in the color. So to do that, we're going to come up here. We're going to hit Shift A, search for another noise texture like this. Plug the vector into the vector. We'll hit Shift A, add a color ramp. Plug this factor into the factor here. And if we preview the color ramp, we can see this going on. And this, none of this is orange yet, which is what we're going to be changing. So on this noise texture, we're going to want to switch the scale to a 60. Leave the detail there. Roughness at a zero. And then we're done there. So we're going to want to switch this black value to a more orange color. So we're going to take the value and bring it up to like a 0 0.92, 0 0.93-ish. Saturation, we'll move up to a 1. And the hue, just something about a 0.4-ish. And that'll give us an orange. Like this. So then on the white, we're going to want to switch that to an orange also. And so for the value on this one, we're going to want to switch to about a 0.75. Like so. And then the saturation, we'll move up to a 1. And the hue, we're going to put to about a 0.4 again. I went with the 0.041. And this is our orange color. You can see there's some slight variation going on here, but nothing too much. Then we'll just simply take this color and plug it into the base color. If we preview the shader, it's now looking like this. And this is a nice orange peel texture. The lighting we have going on right now is pretty simple, so it's not giving it much um, uh, environmental lighting. So to change that real quick, I'm going to do something really simple. If you want, you can just hit turn off scene world. And then you can lower the world opacity and you can get some 3D lighting going around here. And you can definitely see the effects of it in a world with like an actual room or in an outdoor environment. And it's looking quite like an orange field texture. If you want to do something like that for your render, you can go ahead and check scene world again. If you head over to the world editing in your shading workspace, you can grab yourself an HDRI, take the color into the color here, and then you get something like this. You can go over to your render, go to film, and turn on transparent, and then you can render out your orange peel with a transparent background and put your orange wherever you want. So that is going to wrap it up for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, I tried to up the pace of this tutorial in comparison to the others to see if you enjoyed me getting to the point better. And I'm going to be trying that for this next couple of weeks, just Pumping out the information as quickly as possible instead of explaining why everything works. Uh, just let me know in the comments what you prefer. Whether you like the just copying and pasting what I'm doing or whether you want to know exactly why everything is working. Uh, just let me know. Anyways, um, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll appreciate your feedback. And I'll see you in the next one.